Session six, God's dream. So we begin where we left off with the church on earth, growing, expanding, God singing for joy by the number of manna and mercy communities growing. Yahweh was pleased because a family of people on planet earth was learning the way of manna and mercy. Love was binding believers together in community and love was binding communities together in one great body of Christ on earth. In the midst of rejoicing, God began to think. Yahweh thought and thought and thought and then said, I have more to teach them. I must help them to see that they are called to abundant life, even beyond living in friendship with me and one another. They are called to live in a new reality where everything in all creation is reconciled, where plants and animals, earth and water and sky, planets and stars live together as one universal household united in love. By understanding this dream of God, the partner people would understand the purpose of Jesus' life and death and resurrection, the mending of the entire universe. Yahweh called teachers and preachers, prophets and seers, poets and clowns to proclaim the good news of cosmic koinonia. The believers trusted Jesus as their leader and savior. They trusted Jesus to be the one who would bring forth the new creation. The partner people announced their trust by making a simple confession of faith. Jesus is Lord. This confession was acceptable to the big deals of the Roman Empire until they came to the realization by saying Jesus is Lord, the believers are denying that Caesar is Lord. They are denying the Roman Empire as the savior of humanity and the bringer of the golden age of peace. Threatened by this subversion, the big deals lashed out with imprisonment, torture, and death. They promised great benefits to all who would deny Jesus and embrace Caesar, the pharaoh of the Roman Empire, as lord and savior. Now, in some areas of the empire, loyalty to Caesar was tested with the required ritual of emperor worship. All people, slaves, and citizens were required to take a pinch of incense and place it on burning coals before a statue of Caesar. As the smoke ascended, each worshiper was to say, Caesar is Lord. Christians and others refused, and they were subject to severe persecution. Yahweh came up with a wild and wonderful idea to encourage faithfulness among the partner people during times of persecution. The creator sent strange and awesome visions to a dreamer who was imprisoned on an island called Patmos. The dreamer, whose name was John, wrote the visions down and sent his writings to Christian congregations. His dreams made absolutely no sense to the big deals. But to the oppressed believers, the dreams were messages of amazing good news, a word of hope which proclaimed, Rome, with all its military power, is weak and impotent. It will soon join all the past empires on the ash heap of history. God and the wounded lamb hold the future. They will endure forever and will usher in the new creation by the power of suffering love. Here at the River of Life, manna society is complete. Here is food for all, mercy for all, and healing for all. Through the vision of John, God called out not only to believers, but to all humanity. Let all who are thirsty come. All who want it may have the water of life and have it free. Day by day, God added to the number of believers. The nations were coming to the waters, coming home to God. The hope of the prophets of old and the promise to Sarah and Abraham was coming true. All creation sang for joy as Yahweh looked at the fruit of the divine suffering and was satisfied. God's dream was reaching its final completion, a mended universe, a redeemed humanity living in peace, 
Sabbath rest for all creation, cosmic koinonia. Yahweh thought about the story, the long story of friendship, passion, promise, hope, disappointment, heartbreak, forgiveness, death, and resurrection. And Yahweh smiled and dreamed again of the new creation. Then God made a promise. I will never give up until my dream comes true. I will never give up. In the midst of yearning for God's future, joy abounds. A joy which no power in heaven or earth can silence. Joy reigns in the plants and animals, rivers and oceans, planets and stars, and within humans who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Together they see the vision of God, and they hear the word of God which announces, You are not alone. The Holy Spirit continues to create. God continues to act. Everything and everyone has dignity. Hope is certain. Grace abounds. All are needed. All are invited. Everyone. Yes, everyone. Poor and rich, outsiders and insiders, women and men, young and old, those who are healthy and whole and those who are sick, lost, empty, guilty, rejected, shattered, lonely, hopeless, depressed, oppressed, all are invited to live in partnership with the Creator and to sing the hymn of new creation, mended and made whole by the passion of God. That song is this, Holy, holy, holy is God, who was and is and is to come. Heaven and earth are full of God's glory. Hosanna in the highest. Alleluia. Alleluia. To God and to the Lamb be all praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen.